This is not enjoyable. I'm terrified that we're gonna lose the light before we get there. It's so windy. We approach the summit and the view over to the west is phenomenal. It's bitterly cold. Just gotta be patient. So I'm uh, I'm with my good friend Murray, who you may know from Scotland's Mountains. Uh, it's a great channel. I'll link to it below. So go and check that out. But we're gonna go hiking and camping, wild camping in the Cairngorms in Scotland. Now, don't be fooled by this bright sunshine. It is absolutely freezing and windy. Um, so it's gonna be an interesting one tonight. Um, it's more about the hiking and the camping than I suppose it is about the photography but of course being honest with myself it's always about the photography so I'm just packing my bag and it's a case of deciding what not to take as much as it is what to take so I don't want my bag to be crazy heavy although we're not doing much more than four miles in and then back out again so I can't afford to bring a few luxuries such as my pillow and a sleeping bag liner for extra warmth but other than that, I've got the basic stuff, tent, mattress, pillow, sleeping bag. Um, yeah, I've decided to leave behind two of my four lenses. So I'm only taking with me, oh, there's that wind. I'm only taking with me the 70 to 200. So I think we're gonna be up high. So we might get those great sort of long shots into the mountains where you can really compress the landscape. Um, I'm also taking my 24 to 70. Whoa, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Oh my God, look at the colors on him. Hey buddy, look how colorful you are. Oh, sorry about that, I just got a really excited when a massive colorful toad jumped out in front of me. Um, but yes, where was I? We're going hiking, we're going camping. I've had to replace a lot of camera equipment with hiking equipment such as food, extra clothing and stuff like that. This bag that I'm using is expandable, but it's very, very full now. I've had to sacrifice my filters as well, um, which normally I wouldn't like doing, but to be fair on this trip, I've hardly used a single filter. So um, I think I can get away with not taking those. But yeah, bag is packed, everything's ready. And I am very much looking forward to getting out into the Scottish wilderness, I suppose you could call it. And uh, yeah, a bit of camping, maybe even a photograph or two, we'll see. Sorry about that, I was packing my bag, it took ages. <laughs> right, all right, so we're going to drive on a pill then. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, relieved to have found this place. We've been hiking for quite a way and it was uh, not very camper friendly. Lots of heather, lots of bog, nowhere to pitch your tent. And then we've come across this area, which is obviously a well-established campsite. We've got the footpath just up there and we've dropped down. It's sheltered out of the wind. It's nice and flat, it's perfect. Uh, so really, really happy about that. What we're gonna do now is set up camp so that our bags become a lot lighter and then um, Probably go for a hike, maybe shoot sunset, and then maybe 
see how I feel, maybe do some astrophotography. Oh yeah. But you know me. Not the not the not the uh, the most prolific astrophotographer out there. <laughs> That's for sure. So I'll show you in a bit more detail what I've got inside my bag and everything I have with me. I have a insulated down jacket which I'm going to put on now because it's freezing cold. So in order of appearance, waterproof jacket, waterproof trousers even though there's forecast to be clear skies tonight that's not to say you know it won't rain because we are in Scotland after all. Jet boil, a very very fancy pillow which I love to take with me camping and is definitely a luxury. Long spoon, gotta have a long spoon. Thermo Neo Air X Lite sleeping pad. Feathered Friends Down sleeping quilt. My Nordisk Telemark 2 tent. Mixed reviews so far of this, both good and bad. I have a microfiber fleece sleeping bag liner. This thing is really, really warm. If you have this inside of your sleeping bag, it really adds a great deal of thermal properties. <laughs> it keeps you warm, basically. And that's it for the, for the camping gear. So in the back of my bag, I have uh, a dry bag with not much in it, just a few snacks. Gloves, hat, a nice dry pair of socks. Pasta bolognese. Half a bag of chocolate pretzels. Breakfast tomorrow morning. Oh no! Nice bit of porridge. A camera without a lens cap on because for some reason they always pop off in the bag. A 5D Mark IV, 24 to 70, and the other lens that I have with me is 70 to 200. And I also have a bottle of water, and Murray has some whiskey. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I've got with me. Um, now I'm going to set up camp, and then I guess we're going to go hiking and see if we can find a spot to shoot the sunset. And I have to say, it is looking promising. So our camp is all set up just behind me there in the trees. Now I said before that it was looking promising for sunset because there is a big 
storm, a big weather front to the south. And it's not supposed to reach this far north. And actually you can see it. It's just up there, it's a bit burnt out now, but you could see the edge of the weather front. And that was quite exciting because it's always the edge of the weather fronts that catch the light. But it does seem to have just etched a bit further north to the point where it's going to snuff out the light, I think. But basically me and Murray were going to go to a, a quite a decent sized peak, which you can just see there. We're just going to go up there. Um, see what we see. Maybe we'll get a lovely sunset shot. Who knows? Um, but it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be a bit brisk. I think it's going to be a bit breezy. It's going to be a good hike, and it could. You never know. It might result in a nice image. We'll see. It's difficult to tell at this stage. So we're now off the footpath and we are trailblazing and uh, hiking through this boggy moorland uh, all around us there so it feels a lot more, a bit more wild and more remote which is great. We still have quite a way to go. See this large hill behind us, well I thought that's where we're going. Actually that's a false summit and there's another hill sort of that you can't see over here so um, quite a distance and we're getting a bit high now, there's a little bit of snow on the ground, the temperature is dropping. I'm still, I'm so uncertain as to whether or not we're going to get any light this evening because we are on the very, very edge of this weather front that's uh, over my head. Let's have a look. You see behind me, blue skies. This way to the south, weather front. Now I'm hoping that all of this is going to catch, but it's, it's so touch and go. Um, and I cannot call it. If it does, we should have fantastic views. If not, hey ho, we're camping and hiking. What more do you need? Other than photography, of course, and beautiful lights, but you know, camping and hiking's enough, come on. I don't want to say it. I don't want to jinx it. I am not going to say a single word, but look what's happening all around us. Ah, oh, you've got to love Scotland. Takes with one hand, gives with the other. This is relentless. Walking through thick, boggy, uneven terrain and the top of this peak it's just not getting any closer the only way to describe this is relentless oh man if it wasn't for that light I reckon I would have uh, turned back by now this is not enjoyable over and out So we are so close to the summit, so close. I'm terrified that we're gonna lose the light before we get there. Yeah, so. It's so windy, my battery died on this camera. And I'll probably switch to voiceover from here because as soon as I stand up, my God. You're not going to be able to hear a single word. And I was not wrong. The wind was so ferocious, but look at that sky. Look at the light coming through the rain showers and the storm clouds. That's what I'm hoping to photograph. But first I need to grapple with my tripod, but it's hard. It's cold, it's windy, and I'm not wearing gloves. The reason I'm not wearing gloves is because I've had to handle many cameras, change lenses, change batteries, just like this. I'm switching out my 24 to 70 for my 70 to 200 because I need that extra reach. But will it be enough? I need to get it on my tripod and get it level. And only then, when I turn on my camera, 
dial in my settings will I know whether or not I have the reach to be able to get the composition that I want. My hands are so cold at this point and I am really, really racing and chasing the light because I know that that scene will not last more than a couple of minutes. So the battery died on this camera, I've just had to change it. And whilst I was changing the battery, we approach the summit and the view over to the west is phenomenal. We've got beautiful rain showers hammering down on the land with these vibrant, vibrant golden colours as the light shines through the rain and the strong dominant clouds above. It's just gorgeous. There's no real subject to shoot. It's just the scene of the elements, but sometimes that can be enough of a subject in itself. So I got the long lens out, excuse the wind. I got the long lens out, 200 mil ISO 320. And I believe F5.6, I can't quite remember, but I needed that fast shutter speed because the wind is so strong that it's just the whole camera's vibrating. But wow, what a beautiful sight to see as you come over the mountain. Worth every step phenomenal. to see if we can find something else to shoot further that way because I don't believe we're at the highest point yet so let's go and uh, see what else we can see. God it's so cold! So cold but so beautiful. Ah. The light has gone, we have just photographed the very last of the sunlight and those showers, those storms that we photographed just before, unfortunately, they're heading right for us. And at this height, that is gonna be some heavy snow and blizzard conditions. So I think it's time to pack away the camera and get off the mountain. Only one shot, but my God, it was worth it. What a fantastic outing we've had here. Right, pack away get off the mountain before that snow hits us because it's bitterly cold. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So it looks like we packed away, started heading out of here just at the right time. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but the views that were behind us have gone and there is some uh, quite severe looking snow showers heading this way so yeah yeah it's you know it's easy to get caught out up here and it's pretty wild pretty remote so what do you reckon we need uh, to get, we need to get out of here right but it's, it is wild that you get a sense with the sun going down it's just all of a sudden you're in this winter arctic freezing snowy yeah <laughs> it's a bit intimidating actually so i think the sooner we get down and into the uh, into the tents and there's some warm food on. Oh yeah, get back to camp, shelter. Hopefully we can just keep one step ahead of this snowstorm. It doesn't seem to be hitting us head on, but it is all around us. <laughs> Camp here, was it? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna unpack and we'll get some food on. Yeah. yeah. Super. Nice one. Cool. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so 
We're back at camp and it was wild on the summit. But look, inside my jacket I have a nice hot meal cooking and I can cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to that. I think it was good. I think I think I got quite a nice image at the top. There was I haven't seen it yet, and it's funny that you guys have. But it was it, to me it was just a shot of the elements and I, I love that, you know. Really, really nice. Um, but yeah, happy to be back at camp because kind of didn't film much when we were coming down because that snowstorm was coming right after us and we just didn't want to get caught out on that exposed summit. But wow, it was, yeah, it was really fantastic. But this is, this is what it's really all about. We're camping in the woods, we've got the jet boils on, some hot food, we have a little bit of whiskey. And who knows, you know, the photography might not even end back on that mountain. Maybe something will happen tonight. Maybe tomorrow morning, I'm not sure, but it's all about being outdoors. It's cold, but it's peaceful, and it's, uh, it's always a fantastic experience camping out in the woods. Oh, so, Glenmorangie. Yeah, like well, unfortunately, the long hike and freezing cold temperatures took it out of me, and I was unable to find the strength to hike back out in search of night sky compositions. And actually, this is the perfect opportunity for me to help out a couple of friends of mine, Michael Shane Bloom and Gavin Hardcastle, by promoting their latest project, Milky Way Made Easy Photography Course. If only I'd known about this before my camping trip, then maybe I would have had a little bit more enthusiasm instead of curling up inside my warm, cozy sleeping bag. So if this does sound of interest to you, then I will link to their photography course in the description below. Right guys, um, breakfast is on the go. Hot coffee, hot porridge, on a very, very cold morning. Um, slept quite well last night. I was like, well, I found I was either too hot or too cold, so I couldn't quite get it right. Um, but yeah, last night was fantastic. Love the hike. Camping here is great, it's a perfect spot. I've had a very leisurely morning, so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have enjoyed it and you're not a subscriber, then please do consider subscribing. And if you are a subscriber, well, you know, as always, massive thank you for remaining subscribed and for continuing to watch my content. So I'm going to drink my coffee and then I guess we'll pack away and hike back down to the vehicles. So once again, thank you for watching and until next time, bye for now.